How do we know that the Prince of Darkness used to be an angel of light? Recently, someone texted me that question, uh, Pastor, how do we know that the devil is a fallen angel? Where is that teaching in the Bible? The interesting answer is, it's not on the, the first pages. If you would start reading your Bible from Genesis chapter 1, you'd see that God creates, that everything is good, Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, paradise forever. And then you get to chapter 3 and the serpent, the devil shows up and he is far from good. He's a liar, a manipulator, a deceiver, one who brings death and the fall into sin. So if you're reading the Bible from the beginning, it begs the question, where, where did he come from? So the serpent is the devil. He's fighting against God and his goodness, but what, what happened? Well, later on in the Bible, there's a number of clues, then a, a number of specific passages that fill in the rest of the story. I want to share one with you from the book of Jude. So way, way, way near the end of the Bible, it says this. This is verse 6. The angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these God has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Hmm. It's an interesting line. Angels, right? We think God created the, the angels, these spiritual beings. They did not keep their positions of authority, so they didn't stay as these authoritative angels. No, what did they do? They abandoned their proper dwelling. These God has kept in darkness. So we know that at some time in history, good angels fell from where they were. We call those formerly good angels demons. And we call one particular fallen angel the devil or Satan. Uh, the same thing comes up in a related chapter, 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, the language is pretty similar. It, it says this. If God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for the judgment, then he goes on to teach. So angels sinned. God didn't spare them, but he judged them. He condemned them to hell. Ah, okay. So we find out there are fallen angels. They fell because they sinned. God judged them. Satan was one of them. And it makes you wonder, well, what did they do? <laughs> like, if, if you're an angel, you're in the presence of God. Like, everything is perfect. It's like you're in heaven itself. There's God on the throne. He's good. He's righteous. He's beautiful. He's loving. Why would they possibly fall? Well, there's a lot of debate around that question. But there is one, one hint that I've always thought to be true in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3. So in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, my Bible calls it qualifications for overseers and deacons. So this is like what kind of person you have to be to be a, a pastor, a leader in the church. And in verse 6, um, the Apostle Paul says this, The overseer or the pastor must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. So if you're a brand new Christian and then like a week later you're standing in front as the pastor, it would be really easy to be conceited, to be proud, to think you're a better Christian than all of these people. I mean, look at you. You're whoa, you know, leading the church after such a short amount of time. So the Apostle Paul is warning about that and he said that would be the same judgment as the devil. So put all those passages together and we kind of come up with this story that the devil was an angel who became conceited. He was proud. Like in, instead of honoring God as his superior, he wanted to be God. He wasn't content being a spiritual being who submitted to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Like he, he wanted, he was conceited. He was proud. He was arrogant. That was his sin and he was judged. And now ever since that judgment, he has been trying to make people arrogant too. He's been trying to make us proud. He's been trying to make us think that bowing the knee and submitting to God, calling Jesus Lord, denying what we think and want and saying, Father, your will be done. He's, he's been trying to make us think this proud thought 
that that would be bad. That following God isn't good. Eat the fruits, he tempted Adam and Eve. You you won't die. You're going to be fine. You're going to be like God. And so today, um, this isn't just a, a random biblical concept. It's practical for us. Fight against pride and conceit. Believe that God in his very heart is good no matter what he says. Follow him no matter how narrow the road. May we not fall under the same judgment as arrogant, conceited people who don't trust our Father. He gave us Jesus. It's proof of his love. We can trust him no matter what. Do you struggle to find time to connect with God? Well, click here to subscribe to our daily email where we'll make sure that you hear about God's promises, his love, and his amazing word.